Recently, I was fortunate enough to acquire a new space to work on lights, and it's partially set up, looks a little cluttered, but it's getting there. Um, I also put together a cart with uh, various power supplies, high amp on the bottom, um, my go-to normal on the top, and some more sensitive ones in the middle. Uh, they're both set up with alarms so that if they get turned on inadvertently, they will uh, make some noise and flash some lights. Um, there's also redundant off switches uh, for the power strips. Um, the cart comes with uh, its own extension cord. It rolls on wheels and it has a variety of uh, different extension wires. Uh, the high amp uh, alarm is pretty angry. Um, when you clip the power clips in their home positions, um, if it were to be turned on, that would be what would trigger the alarm. Just kind of a uh, safety reminder to me that uh, if I have been running it hot and uh, walk away from it, it's still on. Um, if you see here, I had to pull the black lead, the negative lead, off of the, uh, the home spot in order to use the cigarette plug. Uh, overall, this cart's worked out pretty well. Uh, I would have liked some better wheels. Uh, the bottom power supply is high amp and heavy. Um, here's the actual current state of the lab. Um, a lot of stuff I need to clean up, a lot of stuff that I would uh, like to move around but I've got enough stuff right now to uh, do what I need to do, which includes troubleshooting power supplies, which is the category that uh, this video will go under. Um, there's meters and uh, other electronic diagnostic tools that are uh, not pictured in the video. Uh, this is pretty much just the actual tools that I moved in and uh, the power supply. Uh, this power supply has a fail-safe as well. If I uh, turn it on by accident, uh, you get some light and some sound to let you know you did it. Um, but we're all set up here for some power supply testing, so that's what we're going to break into is uh, power supply testing. And as you can see, there's plenty of them, uh, from Gen 2 Edge all the way up to the EB series. The plugs are all a little different. There's three plug styles represented here, which means I had to build some adapters. Um, I also had to build some adapters for the outputs. Um, there's uh, several types of inputs and outputs. Uh, some of the supplies have, quote, pins on the board, meaning the outputs uh, require female uh, amp connectors to snap into the board and others require um, a different adapter. Um, I use these wheel and par 36's as a test rack because they're pretty reliable uh, but if I ever need to torture test them I just hook them up to this Tomar emitter power supply and it tells me whether or not they are good to go. Um, it pretty much ruins anything that isn't a hundred percent um, the setup itself is ready to test this Gen 2 double flash power supply. Pins are on the board. Um, the adapters for the lamps are installed and the adapter for the power. And the few features, features that it has is going in. Plugging in these... Uh, female to female uh, amp adapters is kind of a pain. Unplugging them is an even bigger pain. Um, again, you can damage the board unplugging these. It's probably one of the downsides to this design. Um, upside being you don't have a whole extra harness to deal with. But uh, testing out this supply, uh, double flash, not a lot of features. Um, pretty confident it's going to work okay, which it does. Um, I kind of put it through its paces here, uh, make sure that the different uh, features, which is essentially your choice of high, low power, or two or four strobes, um, those are the features. I run through them, 
and they all seem to be working just fine. Moving uh, over to the supply, you can see the amp consumption um, from this power supply going by, uh, kind of going up and down with the uh, flash pattern, or at least the charging of the uh, capacitors. Uh, moving on to the next generation, a slightly different input plug. Um, big heat sink on the capacitors, but there's still, quote, pins on the board. Um, very similar in operation. Um, the switching might offer a few more options, but at the end of the day, it just a uh, slight improvement on the uh, first design we saw and uh, draws similar amount of power when it's being used. And moving on to our potted supply. Um, I believe this is an EB6 powering six strobes. A um, little bit of background hiss to it, which might mean it's near the end of its lifespan. Um, these potted power supplies aren't really user serviceable aside from the capacitors, which occasionally can be the problem. Um, usually when they start making that noise, they're just near the end of their lifespan. But here it is, the uh, actual Generation 1 wheel and edge supply. Um, eight outputs able to power four heads at once. Um, what that essentially means is you get your choice of the four corner strobes, all four front strobes, or all four rear strobes. Uh, you can't run all eight heads at once. Uh, unless you get the model with the two power supplies, which was, of course, more expensive. So with eight strobes hooked up to this supply, uh, we can kind of cycle through and see the power supply's ability to switch between the corner strobes, uh, all front and all rear options. Uh, somewhere in there, I think I briefly triggered the uh, inboard front and rear option, which is uh, the option that wasn't really advertised, but you could make work. Um, I like to set these uh, PAR36 extended lenses up to kind of simulate, in my opinion, a wheel and edge. Uh, I got them labeled um, in the upcoming graphic uh, for the slow-mo, and you can kind of get what they're supposed to signify. Um, Wheelin edges, early bars, Gen 1s, um, kind of shows you what you got when you use that model number. Um, you got 360 at the corners, the whole front or the whole back. Those were your choices um, because of the one power supply. Uh, there were versions with two power supplies. Um, handy little graphic as to what you could turn on at once or the matrix that uh, this bar was set up in. And here's how I look at these PAR 36s. Um, front centers, rear centers, front corners, rear corners. And those uh, text fields will pop up in, on top of the slow-mo um, at the beginning for a second to kind of show you what uh, I'm demonstrating. But again, the power supply only allowed for you to do all front, all rear, or all corners, and um, these slow-mo shots are going to kind of walk you through examples of that. Um, if you stick around for the slow-mo um, and you're a real enthusiast, uh, you might notice, like I said, that there's a quick triggering of just the inboards, front and rear, but uh, that's not really showcased heavily. Um, anyway, sit back and enjoy the uh, slow motion simulation on this uh, early rare power supply. And as always, uh, thank you for watching and listening.